can use a walking cane for self-defense is you have reach advantage. That means if they have the knife, the bad guy, the bully, the punk, the thug, whatever, has a bladed weapon or any kind of weapon, except a weapon, but any other weapon, skateboard, chunk of ice, chunk of concrete, iced water bottle, you can create distance between yourself and the threat very simply by sticking the cane between you and the threat. Stick it right in his face, right through his midsection, and then I'm gonna show you how to strike with maximum force, maximum effect. We're gonna close with and destroy the threat using your walking cane for self-defense. So can you use a walking cane for self-defense? The answer is yes. First, because it has reach advantage over a knife, especially number two, it creates more force than you can create with your own body, with your own uh, hands, your own wrists, your own feet. Hello, Garen, it's good to see you. Meaning that you can strike with this hickory or oak cane or whatever your cane is made out of. It could be metal, it could be a hard plastic, and you can increase speed, power, and force of your strikes when you're using your walking cane for self-defense. And this is a special self-defense cane. It's made for self-defense. Hello, Studer, thanks for that donation. That really helps. I gotta tell you the truth, Studer. I was thinking if I get a donation on this one tonight, I'm gonna buy a new camera rig because I've broken it. This is about the 10th one I've broken. I keep breaking these camera rigs because I go inexpensive. I go affordable for now. So I'm gonna get another one. And uh, we're gonna keep making these. This one, it's the first link below. It's got that nasty tooth in there. It's got all these features that increase your speed, power, force, your ability to do maximum self-defense damage to the other person when you're carrying your walking cane for self-defense. So can you use a walking cane for self-defense? The answer is yes. First, you get reach advantage over a knife. Second, you have the ability to increase how hard you can hit. Yes, thank you, Studer. I really do appreciate that. So using basic thrusting techniques, slashing techniques, pushing techniques with two hands and then of course using that hard nasty tooth to rake the skin right off of his face for self-defense that all comes from the walking cane things you can't do just with your hands this is the same length as a joe if you were to straighten this out if you took this and you straighten this out this would be the same as the martial arts japanese joe or okinawan joe it would be about this tall or or thereabouts it might be just a little bit shorter but a lot of the techniques that use with the walking stick, with the hiking staff, or the Joe, the martial arts Joe, you're gonna use with your walking cane. You're gonna use thrusting techniques, you're gonna use slashing techniques, you're gonna use pushing techniques. You can go to the head, you can go to the body. It's very effective. And we'll talk more about the same things you can do with this that you can also do with another martial arts weapon. So you have reach advantage, you have force multiplication. That means you take what you have naturally and it becomes a lot more because you're carrying a walking stick for self-defense or the walking cane for self-defense. And the third reason why you can use a walking cane for self-defense is that it doesn't bleed, right? You take the knife again, and, I'm, and this is my very expensive, very nice everyday carry. This is the one I carry with me in my car. It sits on the seat of my car, the passenger seat, and then I get out, when I get out and I, I pump gas, gasoline prices keep going up. I get the cheapest gas I can get in town and it's still over three bucks. Um, thank you for, uh, for that, you said you send it tomorrow, I appreciate that. This walking cane is my, I, I call it my auto insurance policy. It's a little joke, inside joke, just meaning it gives me an extra layer of protection. Car insurance policy, auto insurance policy, it's not really, it doesn't cover the car, it covers me when I get out and I'm pumping gas and it's getting, it's getting more aggressive. There are more people hanging out, more people who are panhandling, more people who are aggressively coming up to me and saying, hey man, give me some money, give me some money. No, they don't even ask, some of them do. And I'm always generous and I carry blessing bags and I try to help when I can. But you, you get the idea, it's getting more, uh, just a little bit, it, uh, writing's on the wall. There are shortages everywhere. Gasoline prices are going up. Heating oil prices are going up. Price of all food is going up. And then they're talking about shortages, right? There's less coal coming out of the ground and the price of coal is going up. More people need coal, there's less coal. Same thing with uh, natural gas, same thing with propane, same thing with whole heating oil, same thing with a gasoline and car. I'm not trying to be an alarmist because I'm not. I'm, I'm abundantly minded by nature. So what I'm saying is prepare now or panic. Why not? Well, you're preparing for everything else. Prepare yourself with some self-defense tool 
a simple walking cane is the perfect one. Now, can you use a walking stick for self-defense? You can. How? I'm going to switch canes so I don't mess up my very pretty, very nice, but very lethal, very effective. Again, that's a hard piece of oak. When that goes into that soft tissue on the face or through the chest or into the neck or into the ribs or into the thin fascia in, in the body here, hooking somebody down in the legs or between the legs, you know, heaven forbid, God forbid for them, for them, right, for self-defense, it's very effective. So this has a lot of features, but I also don't want to mess it up. So I'm going to get my dojo training cane. And this thing, it's like the beater cane. It's the one that I use. You'll see little knife marks where I can show you for a fact that it, there's the blade side, it doesn't, yeah, Terry's got one of these, T's got one of these. It doesn't bleed, does it, T? He's got the same cane that I've got. And that's one of the nicest features of the cane. That's one of the reasons why you can use a cane, a walking cane for self-defense. Doesn't bleed, you get the reach advantage, and it's a force multiplier. Now let's talk about warm up first, then I'm gonna go into how do you strike in self-defense. But first, I want you to warm up so that you know how not to get injured during your training. And what I do is I'm gonna do this spin, and you'll see some people, my hand just closes gently around it. Some people will use the spinning kind of like a propeller in the Indiana Jones movie, right? And they're fighting on the airplane in the middle of the desert with the Nazi and the guy gets all chopped up. That's not gonna happen with your cane. You're not gonna be chopping people up with this spinning. You're gonna use this spinning to build callus in your hands so that when you're in this position and you pop up and slide it into this position, you're able to hold on to the cane better and it's gonna slide through your hands better. That's the purpose of the spin. It also lubricates the joints, keeping you safe from injury during the work. You might have a little bit of arthritis. You might have a lot of arthritis. You wanna warm that up properly. You just go around and around. And again, all I'm doing is a small cranking motion. I get a little bit of momentum there and I just don't close the hand all the way. I'm not squeezing, I'm just keeping it closed a little bit. Then I'm gonna bring my hand over across the body like I'm slapping someone for self-defense, cross the face, and then backhand across the face. So what happens is my hand comes here and it comes back, here and back. Now I'm getting more of my body into this turning motion, getting the blood to flow everywhere. The, the plasma in my blood goes in there, heals everything, gets me strong, gets me healthy. The breathing, the oxygen gets in everything, starts to heal it up, starts to ease the aches and pains. You're also turning here. I can do this standing, you can do it standing, you can do it sitting. We could both do it standing up, sitting down. If you're in a wheelchair, you can do this in a wheelchair. You just adjust a little bit. You go a little bit wider, depending on what kind of chair you use. Or you can do it sitting on the edge of the bed, sitting on a park bench, however you wanna do it. Just side to side, and then go back over here. And I'll do this for 30 seconds each move. This move for 30 seconds, and then this move for 30 seconds, and then you can take it over your body. The other palm is straight up. I don't think I've ever shown this transfer yet. It's pretty simple though. You don't have to overthink it. And now you're cranking over here. Again, this is just a warm up spin. You can use it in self defense. If this is the threat, I can strike with that spinning motion. I can strike with the spinning motion coming forward. You can. And I have very strong hands and I'm able to move very well when I work with some of my students who are not as, they're a lot older than I am now and they don't have the same strength that they used to have. So if you strike and hit something, especially a moving body, someone jumping in trying to stab you with a knife, this might not be your best opening move, right? I, so I don't teach this in self-defense. I teach it like a boxer jumping rope. It's conditioning the body. And I see there are a lot of questions or comments. I'll try to get to those in a little bit. It would be my greatest love and desire. And I'm, uh, the question was, how would I feel if everybody I trained became better than me? I would love that. In fact, uh, there's a kid in Hollywood right now doing stunts in movies, TV shows, um, commercials, video games, living the dream. He's a lot better than I am at a lot of stuff. And that gives me great pleasure. I've had a lot of students who become much, much better than I have. So my wish for you is that you Cream me, you get 10 times better than me. 
And all you have to do is train. I've always said this, if I can do it, you can do it. And anytime I see something that's really cool that somebody else can do, I say, if he can do it, if she can do it, I know I can do it. It might take me a lot longer to figure it out, but that's what Einstein said. Einstein said, I'm not smarter than anyone else. I just stay with the problem longer. Just keep working at it, keep working at it. And if you agree with that, give me a thumbs up. If you disagree, give me the thumbs down. You just have to stay with it long enough. Now that's your warm up. Let's talk about the first thing that you should do if someone pulls out a knife, and that's get in a better position. Even before you see it, if you just don't feel right, you're not comfortable, there are several ways. I'm gonna show you three ways to get into a better position, a protected position, using your walking cane. The first one is if the cr uh, crook of the cane is facing backward, the way that a lot of people walk with it, and the way you walk with it, you move forward, and then you walk up to it, and some people like to move the same foot first, and some people like to move the opposite foot and the opposite foot, and I like to, I like to practice with both, but I like to, and, and my left hip's been on fire for like a year now, so I have, when I have opportunity to get out and walk around with it, I figure out, I'm trying to figure out like which works best for me, right? There's always one that's gonna work better for you. From this position, step into or step away from the threat. So get into a better position means stepping away from the threat or stepping into the threat. But either way, watch what happens to my wide body. I become a smaller target. If I step back, I'm pulling my vital organs away from the attack. If I step in, I'm closing the distance. Now there's a benefit to both. And what you do instinctively or naturally is what you should do. Don't overthink it, right? Closing that distance takes away a lot of their swing. Closing the distance also puts you closer to that knife if you don't know that it's there or if they catch you off guard. Stepping away increases the distance away from that weapon or that person, but if they're swinging at you, then it increases their power of their swing. It's almost like giving them, like they got a baseball bat or they have some type of machete or something. Stepping back is the worst thing that you can do. But don't overthink it. You can train both ways and figure out what works for you. Train sometimes stepping in, train sometimes stepping back. But either way, step. Make yourself a smaller target. Get that other hand up, and then the cane is gonna go from here with your hand on the crook, and it's gonna slide down. That was the reason for the spins. I wanna get the callus on my hand so that it slides through nice and easily. Now from here, the first motion I want you to think about is a simple thrust. Think of just a, a fencer, right? A fencer going straight in, or a boxer, and even better, idea. The boxer just hitting with that jab. What's the purpose of the boxer's jab? It's for distance. People say, you know, it's, it's to reach and, and figure out distance, but it's also to keep the other boxer off of him or off of her. You're going to throw that box. You're going to just that punch and stick, sticking it out there. And from here, I get in this better position. I just want to push it. Now, the nice thing about the cane is under this hard piece of rubber, which makes it, you know, keeps it from getting torn up on the floor, is a hard piece, a long piece of oak. Or you can get this made in hickory. And it just goes right into his nose, his teeth, his jaw, his throat, maybe the eyes, into the solar plexus, into the groin, or that thin muscle, keeps his guts in. And that's all you're trying to do, is stop his advance first, especially if they've got a knife, or, or they're getting ready to hit, or they have some kind of weapon. Or there are multiple attackers, how to stop multiple attackers. So can you use a cane for self-defense? Against the knife, yes. Against multiple attackers, yes. Start in this better position, thrust first, make this basic simple thrust, and the second thing I want you to practice is from the same shoulder, and I want you to come all the way into your shoulder. And the reason that you come to your shoulder is you're gonna do this strike coming forward at this angle. You're gonna have the most speed and most power when you turn your shoulders and your hips, and you extend this arm. Now, a lot of times when people do this angular strike, they'll do it from here. This is just natural. And it has everything to do with uh, spatial awareness, timing distance, appropriate It has a lot to do with so many things because you haven't done it before. But to clean that up, because I, it has to come from here. If it comes from here, it's between me and the threat the whole time. And I'm gonna hit him. I'm gonna, for self-defense, I'm gonna smash him in his brain. I'm gonna hopefully knock him out then not have to worry about what, what do I do with the knife? Do I try to grab it and twist it out of his hand? No, I'm gonna break his brain and lights out, ideally for self-defense. If I'm here and I'm swinging 
and he closes that distance, my arm's gonna wrap around him. I'm not even gonna hit him with my cane. I, it's gonna be a big fail, I'm in trouble, I'm gonna lose, right? Instead, I get in this better position, I wanna thrust through his face, bring it to the shoulder, and strike. Straight through, follow through with all your strikes as hard and as fast as you can. So as you practice this combination, because we're gonna build this combination, you get in a better position, thrust through the, face, the center of the body, come through here, and I want you to bring it up to that other shoulder and bring it back through on the other side. That's three strikes in combination. Will you do that for self-defense? I don't know, but at least you'll have practiced it so much, it just flows out of you, and you wanna get into flow, right? Flow state in this position, get into a better position. Thrust in, shoulder down, shoulder down, and then bring it here, and I want you to blast them. And this comes this idea that people ask me all the time, what kind of blocks? Show me some blocks. What's the best block if the guy's coming down with a machete? The guy's punching me in the face. If the guy's getting ready to stab me, what kind of block? Don't block him, right? I don't want you to block. I want you to blast him right through his face. I want you to go through here. Hopefully you hit that reset button on his brain, lights out. You don't have to worry about the knife, how to block it. You hit him here, everything in his face is not designed to be hit by a big bar of oak or a big bar of hickory, right? You're, all your body, all your weight as you're moving in, just force into his face while he's coming in, trying to get you here or here or here or here or here or whatever it is. However they're trying to hit you or again, multiple attackers. You gotta get rid of this guy as fast as possible. So you're gonna thrust one, two, three, straight in. And as you go in, think about jumping through him. Think about going through his soul to the other side of the universe, right? Some kind of wormhole opens up through his face and you just launch yourself into there. And all that force going into his face, it's oak against nose, teeth, eyes, brain, all that for self-defense. But the point is violence, using violence to stop his violence against you. The question is, what targets can you remove or destroy? We're going back to the Tim Larkin training, right? Not my, not my training, but Tim Larkin, this great idea, concept of self-defense. You, you get yourself in a better position. Uh, situation awareness is always first. That predates, that's always been in self-defense. But this idea that instead of technique, you worry about the principle. What's the principle of self-defense? What targets can you remove or destroy? Eyesight, ability to breathe temporarily, permanently, and then you just, you go for it, full commitment, immediate, direct, and explosive, close with and destroy the threat for self-defense using your walking cane. So can you use your walking cane for self-defense? Yes, first technique I want you to practice, get in that better position, thrust from the shoulders, always from the shoulders, because if it's here, it's straight in front of your body, if it's here, it's weak, and it's gonna wrap around them. When you're out here, it's all in your shoulder. If you don't have strong shoulders, this is gonna be a bad strike for you. If you're here, it's all in your shoulders and your hips, meaning your upper body turning this way, and you're gonna strike so much force, so much power. Yeah, I think Bruce Tegner, he's, he's, uh, he predate, predates um, to Markin, right? I just saw the, the back end of that comment. All right, now, Second way I want you to carry your cane for self-defense is with the crook side facing out. And I'm gonna show you two things to do here. One you can do whether it's like this or like this, but it's a little bit easier here. And the reason you might carry your cane this way is ergon ergonomically, you have more strength, right? Yeah, he kind of uh, invented the whole thing. Um, so that, that, the, the whole concept. And I think that, uh, uh, Tim Larkin just does a better job and, and uh, with the internet, right? Now that the internet's there, you can give the talks, you can do a podcast. Uh, he's written a great book, uh, When Violence is the Answer, if anybody's looking for that concept of self-defense. Your body weight is here, comes out from your body. From here, I want you to think about straight up. Now, in the case that you can't get in a better position first, I like you to be here when you can. If you can't get there, then I want you to immediately respond to the threat. I always say prepare or panic, right? Prepare or perish. So if you prepare yourself now in training, you say that's his groin, I'm gonna roll him out a little bit. We'll get him a little taller. His groin now is about the same height as mine. Let me 
change the camera angle just a little bit so you can see that. This technique is extremely fast and powerful and easy on your joints, meaning that if you are not as young as you used to be or you're not as strong as you used to be or you've had some injury or uh, you know, you've always had a palsy or whatever it is, you don't have the same strength in your wrist and in your elbow and in your arm, this technique doesn't really affect it so much. This, this is easy, this is good for you. This is gonna work really well no matter what your situation is. That's my point. So in this position, your er and here's the other part of it. Let's say for mobility's sake, you need to use two canes to ambulate, to get around, to walk. Now you can put your weight on one cane. I'm gonna put it on this one, my nice looking cane, right? And then snatch up under his crotch right in the middle, hopefully lift him off the ground a little bit. And then I'm gonna bring it straight through and with one hand because of the way that I'm holding it and turning my arm and my shoulder and my hips all at the same time, I can extend and generate. And remember the principle, he might be bigger and stronger, but that piece of oak is going right into the soft tissue of his body and as he comes forward, it's not bouncing off of him like a billy club might. If it, uh, law enforcement, you got a guy who's hopped up on drugs or he's just crazy, he's got the crazy energy, and they're beating him, and you see those billy clubs just bouncing off of him. That's not what we're doing. We're taking right through the middle and think of he might be hopped up on whatever. If he's coming and he's trying to walk through that, he can't walk through that. That's going to knock his wind out. That's going to crush the cartilage. The cartilage in his throat crushes and he asphyxiates and dies for self-defense in a matter of, of, of seconds. You know, ambulance can't get there fast enough to intubate him and get him to the hospital and save his life. It's gruesome stuff, but it's self-defense. And you're on your two canes and you're leaning on one and you snatch him up between his legs because it's a wrist motion and an elbow motion and a little bit of shoulder. So you have three pivot points and each one adds speed and adds power and adds force and then you have that long length of oak, the first link below. If you want to see what these canes are made out of, what their diameters are, go to the first link and you can read all about them. But it just, all that power. And if you miss that, he's coming forward. So his, his uh, midsection's back, but his chin's there. You keep going, bam, blast him in the face. From here, straight in. And if you have to, down over the top. It's just this circular motion coming down. And, that, and again, it's all about the length and the, the weight of the cane and the leverage. Look how much distance that is between me and the threat. Can I use a cane for self-defense? A walking cane? Yes. How? Snatch him up, turn the, the crook out, go between the legs, thrust straight through the middle, bring it over the top, and then practice that. One, two, three. And if you can, practice both sides so that you're able to do it evenly on both sides. If you have to do this, um, yeah, T says, if you have to defend yourself, defend yourself with the same intention as the attacker, the attacker intends to harm you, to use violence against you, to take away your life or your dignity or your freedom, then you're going to have to meet him with the same amount of intention. I think that's what you're saying, right, T? Um, yeah, woe unto the aggressor, says uh, Suter. Excellent, excellent point. And thanks again for that donation. I really appreciate it. Snatch them up, strike through the middle, practice. That's your second technique. The third way I want you to get into a better position for self-defense is holding the cane the same way here and then slide it down to here. I'm walking with it, slide it. And this also works if you're using two canes and you're leaning on one. Now from this position, the purpose of this crook becomes hammer or fist, hammer or fist, knuckle. I always like to think of it as a big, nasty knuckle sticking out. If you've ever done martial arts and you know how to make that knuckle punch and you hit someone and you hit them in a the nerve, I just hit my own nerve, <laughs> or you go into a soft spot, you know exactly what I mean to, or, or <laughs> what I'm trying to do here. From here, I can now thrust straight to his face. And again, you don't have to be as strong as you used to be. You don't have to be as strong as he is because you're gonna let the cane do the work. Let that hard piece of oak or hickory, whatever you're made out of, smash the nose, smash the teeth. Primary fingers uh, while holding the, I'm not sure I understand exactly what you mean. Maybe give me a little bit more information. Um, 
But in this position, thrust into the face, hook around to the head or into the ribs, and then break. This is one of my favorite things to do. So look at that. This is the uh, self-defense. This is a 40 some dollar cane. Uh, the, I mean, this is one of the, the and it's not gonna break. I used to promote the cheaper, the nine, $10 canes you get at CVS or you can get them on Amazon. And I stopped doing that after I broke about 10 of them. I, I hit this thing way harder than everything else. I've had this for over a year and it hasn't broken. It's not gonna break. It's because it's made for self-defense. Plus it has a wider crook. Those other canes kind of come in here and you can widen the other ones if you want, but you have to strip them down. You got to soak them in a lot of oil. You got to pull them out. And for about 40 bucks, you can have, and you can use this as an everyday carry cane. It's still a very good looking cane. And if you're not into like the eyeballs and all the other stuff, you know, I don't, I'm at the point where I don't really care, but because I know what I'm going to do with it. Right. But look at that tooth. That tooth is designed to reach in. You can reach up, snatch them up, I don't know if you've ever felt, you know, but people get knots back there, right? You get the massage, ah, it hurts. But you reach in there, you pull them down to you, you reach up into the neck, all that nasty stuff that you can do, which is in the neck, into the shoulders, into the ear, right? Into the eyes, into the nose, into the teeth. There's all those different things into the ribs. You can create so much stuff. Yeah, T, T says he carries this. This is everyday carry cane. This is, and I don't know if you can see, I mean, it just, it gets this beautiful patina. The more I use it, it's got so much oil from my hands in it because I just practice so much, you know, the spinning and all the different things. And now we're doing that self-defense form. There, I, put a, um, I put a video up earlier in the week, maybe it was last week, of a, a new cane kata. If you want to learn a cane kata, it goes back a couple days, a couple videos ago, we did the cane kata. I'll do an update because I'm getting better at it. The more I do it, and then I'd love to see you guys. If you could send me a link to you doing your kata, the one that I uploaded, I'd love to see that too. And maybe, you know, I'll send you a certificate or something. I don't know. If you want one. I'm a kind of guy, I don't, I don't carry the way. But if you want a certificate, I can make you a nice one. And we can do some levels and we'll do four or five different kata with the cane. Anyway, so carrying it in this position, get into a better position. Think thrust first. Think hook second, think rake third. You can also simply turn it into your other hand, and now with two hands, you have an axe, a hatchet, right? You're just gonna chop them down, just strike him with that big, nasty, hard cane. Um, one cane good versus two. It depends on how you're, the question is, is one cane good or should you have two? It depends on what you need. If you need a cane to get around, then you should have a second cane for self-defense, in my opinion. Unless, in this position, you, you can get around with a cane, but you can also have good, a good enough balance that you can strike and you do this stuff. That's one of the reasons, one of the reasons I don't teach the spinning and the, the Irish jig, or whatever it's called. Maybe it's a, an Italian jig. I don't, I don't teach, I'm joking you right now. Um, some people do teach, you know, moving around. And, and I, I've got nothing against that. If you can do that, God bless you. Do it. Go for it, right? But in my experience, working with my students, none of us are able to do that anymore. We're not out there bouncing around. And uh, it's like I think of like a Sprite. We're not like a, not the drink, the, the, the woodland fairy, the woodland creature, right? We're not out there dancing around. Instead, take a good position, <laughs> right? I think of John Wayne, brace, get ready. Bam, blast him. When he comes in close, then go for it. Uh, same thing with crutches, absolutely. I had uh, uh, somebody I worked with years ago, used the metal crutches that come up the back of the arm, has a little cup there on both sides and the handles here. And we, that's, and that's, we did the same thing, practice, bam. In this way, in this way, in this way. He, he got deadly with those crutches. But more importantly, he got out of his house more with those crutches. He felt better about himself with those crutches. He had a full, rich life because he wasn't afraid to stay at home because he thought when he went out the house, everybody was going to tease him and pick on him and try to take advantage of him because he felt weak. He didn't feel weak any longer. He felt like 
his crutches gave him some uh, strength, some ability that other people didn't have. So yes, absolutely you can do that with any kind of crutches. In fact, we had uh, Tiger Woods lives just up the road, literally this road, that way. And, and when he had his car accident and we saw him in local pictures, he was out there with crutches. I thought, I got to get him over here. <laughs> That's how I think. Well, you know, Tiger Woods is going to come walking in and say, hey, man, teach me how to use those crutches. Teach me how to use this cane for self-defense. It hasn't happened yet. I haven't seen him. I, I do see it, another very even more famous celebrity on a regular basis, but we won't go into that here. Anyway, he hasn't asked me for any classes either. It's just kind of a personal joke. All right, so basic technique, keep it simple. Those are three different ways you can use it. Can you use a walking cane for self-defense? Yes, why? Reach advantage, it's longer than a knife. Uh, it's a force multiplier. It takes what you have, increases your speed, power, your striking force, and then three, it doesn't bleed. It doesn't break easily and it doesn't bleed. Can you use a walking cane for self-defense? Yes. How? You get in a better position, thrust, angular strikes. You can do horizontal strikes. You can use it like a sword or you can use it like a battering ram. You can use it like um, an axe. You can look, use it like a, a hook, like a, you know, a, a house is on fire. Firemen get in there, they start ripping things out. You can use it as a rake, rake it across the face. You can use it as a fist. You can use it as a, you know, hooking. You come, you come low, come high. It works if you keep it simply. Can you use the spinning for self-defense? You can, but I don't teach it that way. It's just, I'm, and I'm not gonna say no, because in my life I've been wrong <laughs> more than once, right? And as my mentor says, I'm often wrong, but I'm never in doubt. I think he says sometimes wrong. I say often wrong. I'm often wrong, but I'm never in doubt. That means I go in with full conviction until I learn a better way to do it. So you can show me a better way one day, and I stand corrected. And um, some, people, some people are really good with that, that spin, and I believe that they probably can defend themselves better than I can. But learn it anyway. Learn it not for the self-defense. If you don't see it that way, learn it to build speed, timing, distance, just like you would a box you know, if you're a boxer jumping rope. When you do it standing or sitting, this motion here engages your core. The faster you go, the stronger you go, the stronger your arms are gonna get. All your joints, everything else is gonna get stronger and stronger. Again, thanks to Studer for that donation. And um, I got a student, or a bunch of students coming in. I'll see you guys in